Huntsville. And how do you all know each other? You're all in one family? Oh, I didn't realize that. All right, so here's my question for you. Who is the messiest? You're looking guilty over there. <laughs> Sarah. Oh, yeah? No, it's now. <laughs> wow. That's him. All right, now who are your questions for? You. I know they're for me, but who are you going to show them to? Anyone? The world. The world? You're going to make a video and you're going to put it out there. And you met Destin, right? Yes. He's a great guy, isn't he? Yes. All right. All right, so I'm ready for your questions. So, uh, why should kids be excited about science? Why should kids be excited about science? Okay, um, let's see. What did you have for breakfast today? Bacon and pancakes. All right, bacon and pancakes. So let's look at pancakes. Pancakes have flour in them, right? So flour is a plant, right? Yes. And how did that flour get turned into a pancake? There are so many, so it got planted by a machine, and then it got pulled out of the ground by a machine, and then it got ground up by, by robots and machines, and then it got transported, probably on an airplane, and then it ended up getting packaged with other machines, and it got cooked, and on the, well, I don't know what it was cooked on, but that was probably maybe like a natural gas stove, so that means they had to pull gas from out of the ground, use that to heat your pancake, and then you put syrup on it. And by the way, syrup, you have to know about trees, because syrup comes from maple trees, usually. And so if you try to tap an oak tree, it won't work. So, there's a lot of science in your pancakes, isn't there? So just in your pancake, there's a lot of science. Imagine something like running a car. Uh, imagine like all the things that we need to solve, like we want to feed a lot of people that don't have food. We want to go to Mars. Right? So all those are going to need young scientists like you to do that. Would you agree? Yes. All right, cool. So science is very important for young people like you. Because that's how a culture moves forward. It's how we advance and solve problems. Cool? All right, other question? When did you get interested in science? Um, when I probably started walking, even before I was walking. Have you ever seen a little baby that can't walk yet? And if you put them in the middle of a room, you know what they start doing? They start crawling. Why? Because they can't walk. But why don't they just sit there? Because they're curious. They're curious. So they start walking around because they're like, oh, what's that over there? And they go and they're like, huh, it's a stuffed animal. I wonder what happens if I squeeze it. Oh, nothing really happens. I wonder if I want to give it a hug and they put it on their face and it feels different. So even before you can walk, you're exploring. So before I was walking, I was exploring. So what did I get curious? As soon as I could open my eyes, then I became, I became a scientist that day. And I think we all did. What was your favorite experiment? My favorite experiment. So you saw my favorite experiment today. That cloud is my favorite experiment because it's really big and it's nice and refreshing because it's cold inside of that cloud. And it shows how a real cloud is made. Well, not that way, not with liquid nitrogen. But they get up very, very cold, and the water gets very cold, and then it condenses and becomes a cloud. Below zero uh, Fahrenheit. Uh, it's 198 Celsius. And so, it's very, very cold. Nitrogen is actually most of the air that we breathe. When you take a breath, that's about 80% nitrogen. So we're gonna put some in here. Jacob, yeah, go ahead, pour that in there. Big hand for Jacob, he's doing a great job. Oh, by the way, while he's doing that, you're good. Keep going. Uh, for those of you who uh, are the social media type, look at that. Look, I'm on all these things. So if you uh, find, get some really good pictures. Okay, that's good. All right, good. If you find some good pictures, I'd love to see them. I'll be looking for your pictures. And if you want to take pictures or video, this is the time. All right, grab that smartphone. Get ready to roll video because I think that this is going to be impressive. What we're going to do is we're going to take hot, hot water about 100, uh, 212 degrees Fahrenheit, put it in the liquid nitrogen, and two things will happen. It'll vaporize the water, and it will condense it. And if all goes well, we'll get something called a cloud. And sometimes it even goes like this high. Imagine that. Are we ready? Yeah. All right. Oh, I see lots of lights out there. It's like close encounters. All right, here we go. 
I need your help though. Would you please count me down from 10, 9, 8, 7, I like this. There we go. Oh, experiments always change. You know when they change the most? When they fail. So I have experiments that fail all the time. I'll go to build something and it won't work, it'll fall apart, and it won't work. So, you guys, um, did you, you saw that little thing I made the, uh, the cloud out of? Did you notice that was a really long skinny can? I don't know if you noticed that. I used to do it in a big trash can. And I'm just curious if I shape the, if I change the shape of the, the container I made the cloud in, would it make the cloud go higher? And it turns out it did. So that is, I changed my experiment when I discovered that. I wanted the highest cloud I could. Turns out, if you have a bucket, not so good. If you have a trash can, better. But if you have a skinny can, trash can, even better. Here's my name for this little uh, thing that I came up with last night. Using objects in ways in which they were never intended. So the film canister is like that, but that's what innovators do. I mean, imagine if the plane was created and then they went, oh good, we invented the plane. We don't have to do anything else. But no, we have better planes, stronger planes, uh, planes that can do amazing things. So, uh, so that was a great example of a little thing you can do at home. And then, sometimes innovation comes when you don't expect it. So there's a, uh, there's a demonstration that's called the elephant's toothpaste. And you pour two chemicals, and it makes foam. I made it. And it's kind of cool. Normally, it's done in a very tall, skinny container. So I got asked from, for a show to do this, and they, I didn't have a tall, skinny container in my little lab, but I had a flask. And a flask is fat on the bottom and skinny at the top. So I said, huh, let's try it. <laughs> and it turns out, so you have to imagine this, in a regular demo, the foam comes out and sometimes it goes high and then it pours over. So I figured, all right, let's try this with a flask. So here's how it works. You get yourself some 30% hydrogen peroxide. Uh, actually, you don't want to do that because it's really, uh, it's not the stuff in the pharmacy. This stuff is really, really strong. It'd probably give you a chemical burn. That's all, never good. All right, you pour a little bit of that into your flask. All right, excellent. I'm gonna get my uh, goggles on here. <laughs> What was that? Oh, pick it up. Oh, gosh. I'm, oh, I'm halfway through already. I got to get going. All right, then you add a little bit of this strange, mysterious green liquid that I like to call dish soap. And now we need some colors. Blue okay with you guys? All right, good. There we go. All right, so now we mix this together. Now, what's going to happen is we are going to separate the molecules of this. And again, in the regular demo, it would just kind of pour over a little bit. We're gonna use a catalyst to do that because otherwise this would take about six and a half months. We're gonna see if we can do it in a little bit of a shorter time. All right, are you ready? All right, so here we go. Regular demo and then with a flask, here we go. So you pour that in and then you can see the foam start. Whoa! I gotta clean this tonight. Wow, that was pretty good. Whoa, do you see the steam? Yeah, it's warm. So this is, don't worry, the remote's okay. It's all right, Kate. Oh, there we go, sorry. So there it is. <laughs> Woo! So here it is, we did this on Jimmy Kimmel, we totally made a mess. And then, by the way, this is the face I'm always going for. <laughs> then I did this on uh, Kelly and Michael. They wanted to do something different, so I put it in really tall ones. So this is like innovating, trying new things. By the way, again, that's the face I'm going for. And then we actually did this on Nicky, Ricky, Dicky, and Dawn on Nickelodeon. And uh, there you go. Yep, those are the faces I'm looking for. So there we go. By the way, I am over there. I know I don't look very excited. It was in the script. I wasn't supposed to look excited. So, wow, I already trashed the place. Excellent. When did they start calling me Science Bob? Okay, I was named Science Bob by a five-year-old. And so your parents will know a movie called Jerry Maguire. You guys ever seen Jerry Maguire? So there's a little five-year-old in that movie and I was teaching him science. And he had another tutor that was helping him 
uh, learn stuff that was also named Bob. So to tell me apart, he would call me Science Bob, and that kind of stuff. You guys have good questions. Why did you write your book? Why did I write my book? Okay, here's why I wrote my book. I noticed that we need uh, new inventors to solve problems. And so if I could inspire some kids to want to build cool gadgets, well, that's what... Look at that the thing behind you. That's a pretty cool gadget, isn't it? Someone had to design and build that thing. That didn't just come out of a factory. Someone had to design it on a computer. They had to figure out what motor to use. And so, and because of that, we know more about weather. So you have to figure a problem that you might want to solve and then maybe build a gadget. And so my books have gadgets in them to get kids building gadgets. And do you think every gadget will work the first time? Nope. And that's how we learn and that's how we make things better. Showing off what you guys have made. Please give it up. All right.